Hello, everybody, and welcome to Numbers Don't Lie, episode one. So I've titled this episode, Indian Drivers Are Not Smart. That's right. We are not good drivers. Most of you must be asking, why am I making such claims? Well, let's say I had a lot of time on hand and I utilized it to take a look at some numbers. And what I saw was surprising. If you want to get to the bottom of this, stay tuned with me and watch till the end and get bamboozled just like I did. So I was looking for the uh, road accident report for 2023 and uh, surprise, surprise, it's not out yet. Although we are sitting in July of 2024. So I'm going to make you with the 2022 report and walk you through some of the data that we have. So right from the first paragraph, you can see that whoever made this report is making all sorts of deflective statements, shifting the blame here and there. The report starts off with, and I quote, Exposure to adverse traffic environment is high in India because of the unprecedented rate of motorization and growing urbanization fueled by high rate of economic growth. As a result, incidents of road accidents, traffic injuries and fatalities have remained high. So what they're trying to say is poor roads, poor driving etiquettes, poor enforcement of traffic law, all of this has nothing to do with the road accidents. It's only because people are buying too many cars and people are earning too much money. There's accidents happening on the road. Way to go, government of India. Way to go. So in the section one, the 2022 report deals with the total number of accidents and many other data points. But I wanted to compare the absolute numbers from 2022 to 2012 and see what is the difference. To be honest, the presentation of the 2022 report is much better. 10 points to Gadgar Indor. <laughs> but the insights and the inferences that they are making from all the data points that they have is much worse. Even a class 11, class 12 student can make a much better report, in my opinion. So on the surface level, the total number of accidents went from 4,90,383 in 2012 to 4,61,312 in 2022. That is down by 5.93 percentage. But whoa, don't open your champagnes yet. Let's look at this number in a little different angle. In 2012, for every 100 accidents, there were 28.2 deaths. Whereas in 2022, the number is 36.5, which means that there is an increase in the number of deaths per 100 accidents by 29.43 percentage. In fact, in 2003, this number was 18. And there is a consistent increase over the years. So basically, there have been tremendous infrastructure improvements in the last few years, but that has not translated into safer roads. The numbers certainly show they have not. When you look at these numbers with the time angle, you know, with the lens of time, and you break it down to how many accidents and how many deaths occurred every hour in 2022, you get 53 accidents and 19 fatalities. Let that sink in. Let's look at the injuries. There were 4,61,312 accidents, and in these many accidents, 4,43,366 people got injured. So for every 100 accidents, 96 people got injured. The report also categorizes all accidents into fatal accidents, grievous injury accidents, and minor injury accidents. A whopping 65% of total accidents fall under the fatal and the grievous injury ac accidents. Let's compare this to a country like USA. USA ranks number one in the total number of accidents that occur over there. For every 100 accidents, there are only 0.7 deaths in the US. Compare that to 36.5 in India. Now you might say, oh, why are you comparing to USA? It's a developed country. Compare India to Brazil or Bangladesh or some place like that. And to that, my friends, I say, with all due respect, off. if you want to compare yourself Compare yourself to the best. Don't console yourself with your own shittiness to how shitty someone else is. I know Brazil and Bangladesh and everybody have their own problems. Even they should compare themselves to a country which has better statistics, not to India. So moving on. Point number 1.6. I'm quoting it. Proactive approach towards road safety by 
ministry and all stakeholders contributed to significantly now fire the guy who wrote your report the guy doesn't know any grammar what they wanted to say is proactive approach towards road safety by ministry and all stakeholders contributed significantly over the years the implementation of motor vehicle amendment act 2019 became effective from 1st september 2019 is one of the proactive steps of the ministry the mva act 2019 included inter alia i don't know what i don't know what that is provisions like stiff hike in penalties for traffic violations you're not able to catch anybody who is doing any traffic violations what are you going to penalize them for electronic monitoring of the same half of your cctv cameras don't work and you're going to ha- have electronic monitoring enhanced penalties for juvenile driving really what did you do you enhanced the penalty for juvenile drunken driving from 100 word essay to 300 word essay is it mm-hmm. point number 1.9 in section 1 mentions category wise distribution of accidents and fatalities reveals that the highways with around 5% of total uh, road network in the country accounted for 55% of total accidents and 60% of the total fatalities so basically what they're trying to say is out of all the roads that are there i think there's 63 lakh kilometers of road this is as of 2020 out of all those roads national highways and state highways constitute 5% and only this 5% of roads account for 55% of the accidents happening and 60% of the deaths happening in india due to road accidents 21.5% of the deaths occurred when a vehicle was hit from the back this is not a surprise in a country where people don't understand the concept of tailgating just visualize a kreta right behind you honking and you know flashing its lights you might as well give that asshole his space and get out of his way when we take a look at the vehicular composition in india 74.7 percentage of all registered vehicles in india are two wheelers that's right we are a country of bikers that huge number is followed by cars jeeps and taxis which are just 13.4 percent the rest is other vehicles like goods carriers buses auto rickshaws e-rickshaws etc so the next thing that i want to look at is how much road construction is happening compared to how many vehicles are getting registered on a yearly basis in india so when we look at the data from 1950 to 2020 we see that we started with 4 lakh kilometer roads in 1950 with 3 lakh vehicles registered to us going to 63 lakh kilometers of paved roads versus 3263 registered vehicles sorry 3263 lakh registered vehicles so the cagr or year on year roads grew by 4.02% but then year on year the number of registered vehicles grew by 10.5% do you see the imbalance over there and then you start complaining that there's so much congestion in our roads no wonder there's so much congestion in our roads All right in section 2 the geniuses who made this report categorized the uh, accidents under national highway state highway and other road types national highway and state highways are 5% and other road si- road types are 95% which is like i mean you at least have to have some kind of division in the dump where you're like you know bucketing things under this is just uh, stupid what is alarming is that just in the national highways you know i told you that in 5% of highways which is national highways and state highways included there's 55% of accidents occurring in just national highways 32% of the accidents occur and national highways are 2.1% of the road network 
Another point that the report mentions and does not elaborate is that 72.5% of the accidents and 75% of deaths that occurred on national highways were due to overspeeding. So overspeeding is attributed to the most number of accidents and deaths on Indian roads. But how is that conclusive? What are you going to do with that data? You're just, you know, putting everything under the bucket overspeeding, right? You don't know why the accident occurred. Okay, you're overspeeding. Somebody who's standing next to the road, the car might be doing 60 kilometers per hour on a national highway. And then that guy must have said, oh, it was very fast, the car. And it was wrong. And it was an accident. Ho gaya. So then you put it under overspeeding. So there's nothing, I mean, like, what, what are you going to do with this data? In a lot of places, even national highways, like I remember getting challans on my car on the Hyderabad-Bangalore highway for going over 60 kilometers per hour. So what, what is the point? In a lot of places, you're, you have speed limits that is 60 kilometers per hour or even 40 kilometers per hour. So what are you trying to say? like all of these 72% of accidents that happened were they above 100 kilometers per hour or were they above that stupid as uh, speed limit that you put even on you know open sections of a highway of 60 kilometers per hour so there is no explanation in the report there is nothing it just says 72% of the time people are over speeding and that's why they are getting into an accident which is again like similar to the first point that i mentioned they said there's too much urbanization there's too much uh, uh, motorization and that's why accidents are occurring and now they say oh uh, there's no fault of the government uh, but uh, uh, everybody is just overspeeding so that's why accidents are occurring yeah i actually had like a sarcastic uh, suggestion to the government of india if you think 70% of the deaths occur due to overspeeding why don't you you know restrict all the vehicles to be only 30 kilometers per hour you know that's it you save 1.5 lakh lives per year do it let all the vehicles run only at 30 kilometers per hour like in this age when there are so many sophisticated methods of collecting data you are just you know making broad strokes and saying over speeding and 75% come on man have some shame get some better data work on that data and get some better insight so that you can solve problems i am smiling but then it's not because i find this amusing i'm just smiling because i find this so absurd that is funny i mean it's so bad that it's funny 10160 pedestrians lost their lives where they you know walking too fast government of india so 10160 pedestrians lost their lives on highways and 32825 overall pedestrians pedestrians lost their lives these people must have lost their lives most likely while crossing the road and the main thing is that people cross the road from anywhere they don't give two shit flying fucks about you know who is on the road what road they are crossing what speed vehicles might be you know coming towards them at they just you know put their hand out like this and start crossing sometimes people act like cattle and there's so much unnecessary death and it, and this is again i mean i'm not going to entirely blame blame the people our legal system is thoroughly incapable of enforcing any type of traffic law so it is a big failure for the government of india let's come to the elephant in the room the two wheelers a total of 44% of deaths which is 74897 deaths occurred when the person was on a two wheeler you think that is crazy out of the 74897 50000 people were not even wearing helmets isn't this basic now do you understand why i say we are not good drivers we are not good riders people gamble with their lives every time they go out on the road without helmets this includes the pillions out of the 50029 14337 were pillion riders and i'm assuming majority of the 24k who were wearing helmets must have been wearing substandard helmets have you seen you know the type of helmets that are there that are being used currently what percentage of helmets that are currently being used actually meet the bis standards 
what percentage of helmets that are currently being used can actually protect somebody when they are in a accident i highly doubt the quality of the helmets that you know indians purchase these days they get one for 600 rupees 500 rupees what kind of protection is that thing going to give you why not invest let's say 3 to 5000 rupees in a good helmet to protect your own heads so this is just a small summary of a 200 odd page report almost 100 150 pages out of that 200 page report is basically the same repetitive stuff uh given in different different uh permutations and combinations so i will link the report in the description you can go through it if you want to then there are some more absurd stats that i saw in this report 75% of all the accidents occur in clear sunny weather no fog no rain no snow no whatever the climate is clear and sunny 5900 lives were lost on under construction and pothole roads 25000 lives were lost at uncontrolled crossings people don't understand the simple concept of stop look and go over 70% of people who lost their lives were under 45 50% were under 35 81 people died because they were hit by a bicycle 84 because the accident was between two bicycles and finally india is number 4 in total number of accidents behind usa japan and the report says chinese taipei i, I don't know whether that is taiwan i don't know what they're trying to say but it is number 1 in the number of fatalities so it is time to wake up when you're saying 70 over 70% of your deaths are occurring because of over speeding it is a very gross generalization i think they should enforce some type of data collection method in the cars in the motorcycles so that we can get some kind of accurate data and find some accurate solutions to those problems rather than just you know sweeping everything under one blanket second thing is when people are driving or riding their motorcycles or bicycles or even if they are walking uh, near the road they need to be at uh, a consciousness level of 110% not even 100% so the government seems to be taking steps but they're not enough we as a people need to take charge and ensure our own safety it may take another 75 years for the government to bring world class roads and world class law enforcement and traffic rules to india but we can start being smart drivers and riders today i made this video to show you facts in my profession numbers are supreme that should be the case when it comes to government accountability why doesn't anyone take numbers into account when electing their leaders It is high time that we did it. Set aside the politics of caste, creed and ideology and hold leaders accountable for their performance. In your offices you do have performance appraisals every year. Why not do the same for your leaders? Let's try to take charge of our own safety before we end up as a statistic. Until the next one, stay safe, ride safe. Peace out.